to begin with, I'm going to um, read a poem that I just wrote yesterday. So um, please forgive me if it's not well thought out yet. Hearing the stories of people we've lost sends me spinning. Spinning golden threads of memories laced with tears, tempered with fears, searching for meaning in their post-truth tomes, wading through the sands of time with a comb. It's the almost excessive access to the horror that oppresses my dome, my domain of private soul space where every person in the human race has their rights and their place at a table of inalienable grace served up not by false nobility, but by divine soliloquy. So it can't just be me. I can't be the only one who senses, who sees, hears, feels my heart peel like an onion so strong. It burns through the smoke of this terrible yoke of hate and bigotry, of political idolatry. Home of the brave, land of the free, we've lost our way far at sea. I mean, when you've got more black men in lockup, than the entire South African Roundup, and more souls living in the city streets than the entire Mendocino County beat. But all we hear on the news are the crews from the right who think their might makes them right when they're all four ways of wrong, singing an old song of oppression and privilege, of dashed dreams and dribblage. They turn us all into terrorists with a flick of a wrist. We end up on no-fly lists or a bunch of undocumented criminal immigrants, all without a second thought and not for naught. They raise their orange alerts, red and orange alerts to steadily assert their sense of reality and readily pervert our sense of morality. Then all this can mean is the nightmares have supplanted the dreams. And laughter has been supplanted by screams as shots ring out in churches, synagogues, and mosques. We must all understand the cost. And all I keep thinking is, what can I do? What choice can I make? What chances am I willing to take? Will I fear to be me? Will I fear to speak truth and poetry? Or will I walk with dignity? So echoing the call of our creed, I say, serve human needs. Serve another with compassion, whether or not it's out of fashion. Remember, the unknown soldier's worthy of remembrance precisely because no one knows his name. His cause is his moniker and his end game. Would he have fought less valiantly would he, have said, would he have said, it's all about me? Or did he give his life to see the best there is in Lady Liberty? We must all be the heroes we're destined to be in our everyday choices with our average voices. We must call out for what's right and shun the wrong so that in these darkest nights, through this crucible of pain and fright, we can find the strength to stay our path and reach for light. With that, I'd like to just talk a little bit about each one of the victims. I'm going to cycle through. The first is Ozair Kader. He's 24 and a student pilot at the International Aviation Academy of New Zealand and had been in Christchurch for just a year when he was killed on Friday. Sayed Jahandad Ali, 43, from Pakistan, was one of the 50 kills, victims killed on Friday. Mahboud Alaraha Korkar, 65, who was visiting his family in New Zealand and was due to return to India on Sunday. Husna Ara Parveen, who was reportedly gunned down after having saved children and... I'm sorry, I keep forgetting to change this. So this is the gentleman who was visiting his son. This is Husna Abda Praveen, who was a school teacher, uh, or Sunday school teacher, and she got a number of the women and children out from the mosque, came back in to find her husband, and that's when she was gunned down. Ashraf Ali, a respected imam at the Masjid al Noor, who was originally from Fiji. Sayyid Arib Ahmed, 26, from Karachi. (coughs) 
Linda Armstrong, a native New Zealander, Islam, embraced Islam years ago and was a well-known face at the mosque. Tarek Omar, 24, who is remembered for his kind, humble nature and was a former student of Kashmir High School in Christchurch. Six-year-old Abdul Fattah Qasim from Palestine, who was also killed on Friday. He was the Muslim Association of Canterbury's former board secretary. Sohail Shahid from Pakistan. Four-year-old Abdullahi Diri, who was named amongst the dead, but he, both he and his father Adnan were shot, while four of his siblings escaped unharmed. Abdullahi's family fled Somalia in the 90s and made New Zealand their home. He was the youngest of his family. We don't have a picture of him. Al Madani, 64, who's a retired engineer who made New, England, New Zealand his home. Atta Aliyan was reportedly killed on Friday. He was a national level football player and has been remembered as an inspiration. He had a brand new baby girl who was less than two months old. Kamal Darwish, 38, who moved to Christ Church from Jordan only six months ago and was awaiting the arrival of his wife and three children. This gentleman and this, their father and son. Ramiz Arif Bhai Vora, 28, and his father Arif Bhai Muhammad Ali Vora, 58, were both shot dead on Friday while worshiping together. The 28 year old lived and worked in Christ Church and had a baby daughter one week before he was killed on Friday. Muhammad Omar Farooq, 36, from Bangladesh. Amongst the other victims is Munir Suleiman, 68, from Egypt, who is a design engineer and worked at Scott's Engineering in Christchurch since 1997. Zaheen Reza, 38, is also amongst those killed and was a mechanical engineer who moved to New Zealand from Pakistan in 2018. Both he and his parents, Ghulam Hussein and Karam Bibi, were killed at the Linwood Masjid Mosque. I don't have any pictures of them. Ansi Alibaba came to New Zealand to pursue a master's degree in agribusiness management at Lincoln University. Lilik Abdul Hamid, 58, was from Medan, Indonesia, and he died on Friday, leaving behind two children. This is the youngest of the people that were killed that day. Three-year-old Mossad Ibrahim died in the arms of his father and brother, who only survived because they played dead. Mossad Ibrahim was attending fire prayers with his father and older brother Abdi Ibrahim when the gunman stormed into Al Noor Mosque. It is believed that at the time of the attack, he ran away from his gunman, while his father and brother were playing dead. This is Amjad Hamid, 57, who is a senior medical officer of cardiology and a rural hospital consultant in Huera Hospital in New Zealand. He moved to New Zealand 23 years ago because he wanted a better future for himself and his wife, and he is remembered for his kindness, compassion, and sense of humor. Haji Dawood Nabi, 71, father of five and a retired engineer, moved to New Zealand from Afghanistan in 1977 and set up a new life as one of the first Muslims in New Zealand. He is believed to be amongst the dead from Friday's shooting. Khalid Musafa arrived in New Zealand only a few months ago from Syria with his family. He and his son Hamza, who was 16, also died. Osama Adnan Abu Quick, 37, from Palestine, was in the process of applying for New Zealand citizenship when he was killed on Friday. 
This is Muhammad Haq from Bangladesh. Another amongst the dead is Musa Vali Suleiman Patel, who was visiting Christ Church to see his son and was a highly respected leader of the Fiji Muslim League in New Zealand. He left behind his wife, Saira Bibi Patel, three daughters and two sons. This is Talha Naim. He was shot at the Majlul Noor this last Friday. This is his father, Naim Rashid. Witnesses have said that after watching his son shot, he got up to wrestle the gun away from the shooter on Friday. His bravery allowed others time to escape, but he was badly wounded and sadly later died in the hospital. Hussein Al Omari was a regular at Majid al Nur where he was killed. Muhammad Ab Dusi Samad, 66, from Bangladesh, was a lecturer at Lincoln University and frequently led prayers at Majlul Noor. This is Kashmir High School student in Christ Church, Sayyid Milne, 14, who was at Friday prayers when the shooting started and is believed to be dead. His father, his father has publicly spoken of his loss and is hard to be consoled. <coughs> Dr. Harun Mahmoud leaves a wife and two children, ages 13 and 11. These last few people are people that are missing and or injured, and we're not sure what their status is. A spokesperson for the Pakistani Ministry of Foreign Affairs has confirmed that five Pakistani citizens are missing. Amongst them is Sayyid Jahandad Ali, who is believed to have died. <coughs> Wasim Daragme is a Muslim barber who immigrated from Jordan five years ago. He and his beautiful daughter were shot on Friday, and they're in critical condition. This is uh, one of the wives of the man that is missing, and she's still hoping for good news about her husband. Thank you all for listening.